Gracias. All right, so what we've been talking about so far is having our heads up in class. So therefore, yeah, rise away. Okay. Um, then after that, we would start talking about, remember we talked about relationships, right? We had relationships between, what we talked about was relationships between two coordinate points. We had a relationship between an X and a Y point, right? Right, we talked about this was an ordered pair. And there's a relationship between these pairs. And what the relationship was, X told us how far we go. You know, let's say we had three comma two. X told us how far to go left or right, which here would be three points over to the right on the X axis. And then two told us how far to go vertically, which would have been up two on the horizontal axis or the Y axis, right? And that's, that was the relationship between these two, right? We said they had a special kind of relationship. One told us where to go, and the other told us you know, where to go in another way. One told us to go left and right, the other one told us to go up and down. They're related to each other. Dylan, seriously, pay attention. So we talked about having relationships. Well, now we're going to talk about a special type of relationship, right? Very, very special type of relationship. Now, this relationship is, remember guys, we talked about a lot of ordered pairs, OK? And you know we put up a lot of different points up here, and we looked at you know that we looked at one thing was input and output variables, and we said that your input was remember like your domain. Let's say if I have let's put up another couple points, and let's put up zero comma four. Okay, so we said negative two three should be like right there, and zero four should be right there. Well, remember, we said that these were all of our x values and these were all of our y's. So we talked about one thing. We talked about domain, right, was all your x values, 3, negative 2, and 0. And we said our range for this was all of our y values, which was our 2, 3, and 4. We also said that the, the domain was kind of like your input, right? And that kind of made more sense. When, uh, when we're working on word problems. But if you guys can just remember, your domain is your input and your range is your output, right? And also, these are also, also your y, or I'm sorry, your domain was your x values and your range was your y values. So if you guys can kind of clump these together, what I'm about to talk about is gonna make, some, it's gonna help you make some more sense, all right? Our domain is the same thing as our input, which is the same thing as our x values, which is the same thing as these coordinate points right here. Okay? So what is the special relationship we're going to talk about? Well, we're going to talk about a function relationship. And the special thing about a function relationship, actually, I can just keep this up here. The special thing about a function relationship is every x value is related to a specific output value. Okay, you guys see how these all have their unique output value, right? You see how they're specially related? They're specifically related to one person or one little output value. Now, if I wanted to make so, so therefore right now, this is what we call a function. However, what would something not be a function is if I were to pick any one of these x values and give it a different value. Let's say three now would map to one. Well, so what we're saying is 3 is related to 2, and 3 is related to 1. Well, that's fine. They can be related, but they're not going to be a function. All right? And let's kind of look again at how, how this might work. Let's say, um, let's say we're talking about a regular equation. We have y equals x plus 1. Okay? Let's just do x plus 1. And let's pick a random point. Let's pick a point 10. 10, okay? So 10 is going to be my x value, which is also my input. So if I was to put 10 into there, y equals 10 plus 1. So therefore, y equals 11, right? So if I put 10 in for x, okay, I get out 11. Right? Think of like 10 is like your input. You put in 10 and your output becomes 11. Now, is there any other number you can put in for there? 
I'm sorry, if you put 10 in for x, is there any other number you can get out that would be different than 11? Yes. So if I put in 10, what other numbers could I get? Um, my five. Well, 10 plus 1, is it always going to equal 11? Yeah. yeah. Could it equal anything else? Yeah. No. So therefore, you guys can say that this is what we call a function. All right, because the reason why it's a function is because every time I put in a number, it uniquely gives me an output value. Just think of any number in the world. What? Somebody want to raise their hand? Give me a number, random number. Hey. Boy. Raise your hand. Seven. Yeah, oh yeah, you in the back. Eight. Eight. So if you're putting eight for this, nine. eight plus one is what? Like nine. Right, like nine. Thank you. So therefore, y would equal nine. Is there any other way that y could equal something different if you put 8 in for x? No, it's always going to be 8 plus 1 will always equal 9, right? So um, we're going to look at a couple different examples, but I want to make sure you guys understand what a function relationship is, is you have something that whatever you plug in for x, you're always uniquely going to get something different. Or I'm sorry, you're always going to uniquely get the same output value, all right? This is not a function because look at what happened. When I put in 3, when I plugged in 3, I got out a 2. And then when I plugged in 3 again, I got a 1. So therefore, that's not a function, right? Because I put in the same number and I got out something different. Gotcha. Does that kind of make sense? No. Kind of? Sorry. How much time we got? Right. 10 more minutes. We'll end it there.